Hey guys, Spartan117GW here, and welcome to another episode of the Armory. So the gun we're going to talk about today is the GNG L85 AFV. Uh, so what it essentially is, is a cut down version of the full length rifle used by the um, British Army. Um, real steel nomenclature is the Lima 22A1. It was designed for tank crews, air crews, anyone who needed that extra firepower in a carbine or even shorter length package. Uh, even though in in a lot of ways this compares to an M4, what the British Army kind of uses it for, it essentially is just, it's so much more compact. It's it kind of, it's, it's almost like a hybrid between a PDW and a carbine just because of the size profile. Uh, because it's a bullpup design or bullpup configuration, the barrel is just as long as a 10 inch barrel M4. Uh, if you actually look at the actual stats, the inner barrel is 305 millimeters. That's five millimeters more, marginal of course, uh, than the standard inner barrel that comes in with most uh, 10 inch M4s. Um, but one thing that's really cool too is that this whole front end does come off when you install the battery. Uh, it is kind of a pain in the butt though with the fact that, I mean, I can understand they're working within their limitations, but the battery space is kind of limiting. Um, a short buffer tube lipo battery, even a 7.4 will probably do pretty good in there as long as the length isn't too bad because there's a big chunk of this whole front portion that has to stick into the uh, the upper receiver here. Um, as you can see, it has a little bit of rail space, one for vertical grip, and the gun was originally designed uh, to be used in conjunction with a vertical grip. Um, it also has a little bit of rail space here in case you want to mount a light, a laser, something like that. Um, all the controls are on the left side of the gun because this is really designed for a right-handed shooter. You have the safety, the mag release, and the selector. So if you're a lefty, this might not be the gun for you unless you're really dying to add this to your collection. Uh, one thing that's really cool, um, cool. It's actually, it's cool, but it's also kind of a drawback at the same time because it kind of keeps the gun's uh, kind of more retro status. Is the fact that it's really only designed to use um, Stanag style mags, which everyone for the most part has, uh, but it kind of sucks that there's not a lot of mags that really work with this gun. Uh, but it is definitely a hefty gun. As you can see, there's a lot of metal on here. Um, for being a gun that's this size, the first time I picked it up, I was like, damn, this thing's got some weight. And I have the full length version, but I mean, even then, it still kind of caught me off guard. You know, all the weight is in here. Like the whole gearbox, everything, it's right here. But it's, at the same time, it is kind of authentic too, because that's where all the firing mechanisms are. So, you know, and it also keeps the weight nice in the pocket. So it's very, very pointable, especially when you're popping out behind cover or for CQB or anything like that. It's just very easy to maneuver. You can really snap you know, the gun to wherever you need it to go. Uh, one thing that's really awesome, uh, for the price point, 380-ish or so, a little bit on the high end, but you do get an optic, like a full magnified optic that's functional, that actually has illumination, and it's fully adjustable in terms of, you know, windage, elevation, all that stuff. Um, so it's pretty cool that, and, you know, even, even with a gun like this, that you're gonna get a scope right in the box. I do have some gameplay on my channel of me playing in Extreme Combat, and I actually got quite a few kills with this thing. The rate of fire uh, with an 11.1 is actually pretty BC. I'm not 100% sure if you really need to use an 11.1 with this. Uh, I just, that's just what I had, and that's just what would fit. Uh, but um, that's what I've used. Um, you're probably gonna see a little bit more wear and tear on there unless you're using a 7.4, but that's just what I was using. Um, it shoots about 360 FPS, pretty good range, pretty good accuracy, and I was actually kind of surprised with some of the kills that I was getting, running and gunning and kind of popping shots through like trees and stuff at extreme combat. But overall, it's a really, really cool gun. If you do have the extra, you know, money to get something like this, I'm not 100% sure, but there are a few of them still out there. Uh, one gripe I will tell you about, or one thing to be uh, wary of is, it does have blowback, which is really cool. But the problem is that the, the way the um, charging handle is designed, it's, it's all on the flimsy side, especially where it meets the uh, upper receiver. Uh, so with hard use, it, will break. It's not like some MP5s where some might or some won't. It like will, unless unless you're really, really lucky. Like just, just by running around and doing stuff like it'll it'll get snapped off. You, know, you go through a really tight bunch of trees and it'll just clear it off. But it doesn't kill the functionality of the gun. And if you're still looking for something unique, it's got some pretty good performance and that's gonna kind of turn some heads when you go to the airsoft field. This is one of those guns. So I might do like a British loadout or something one of these days. I did actually buy a set of MTP pants for like 19 bucks, which is actually pretty good for British British uniforms. Uh, but you know, really cool, unique gun, and uh, definitely one of the favorites in my armory. So make sure you guys check out the gameplay, and uh, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time.
guys, Spartan 117 DW, and I'm here with Paul Solera. And I'll make sure you guys subscribe too. Spartan 117 GW. And make sure you guys check it out. Thanks for watching. Elite Force BBs, that's what's in my mag. Thanks for watching.